Get ready for a full-on mashed potato experience. Today, we are making three different kinds of mash at three different levels with three different techniques. And I sincerely hope by the end of this video, you have learned a few things and are ready to take your own mash to a whole new level. There is no time to waste, my friends. Now, let's go! Today, we're gonna to be working with three different types of potatoes for three different types of mash, starting with what I would describe as the M16 of the potato world, the mighty russet potato. Russet potatoes are high in starch, low in moisture. You're gonna see them most used for baked potatoes, mashed potatoes, and french fries. Next up, Yukon gold potatoes, which can be described as an all-purpose potato. They're somewhere between starchy and waxy, right in the middle. With Yukon gold potatoes, you're not gonna get a mash that's quite as fluffy as using something like the russet. They do have arguably one of the best flavors out of any potato. They're rich, they're buttery, they're just delicious. And the last one is a red potato, which is usually an unusual choice for mash. These kind of potatoes really hold their shape well when cooked, so they're ideal for things like potato salad. However, I learned an incredible technique from an even more incredible chef using these potatoes, so I'm gonna go with them today. Without any further ado, let's get started. We shall begin our adventure with the homemade mash. I'm using the russet potato for that. And when I'm working with potatoes, I'll just peel them whole and leave them in the water so they don't brown it all while I peel the rest. Another trick that can be great for peeling potatoes, and especially if you're doing this with your children, is to just stick a fork in the potato like that and then just peel it down. It works really well and you can actually do it really quickly this way. For the best snack ever, definitely don't throw away your potato peels. I'll put a link in the corner right now for that video. Next, you just simply need to slice your potatoes, and when you're doing this, the only thing you need to remember is to slice them into kind of bigger chunks and just make sure they're all the same size. You do this so they're all done at the same time, making for a perfect mash. I would also recommend you change change out the water a few times before starting the boil to remove some of that excess starch. I was also taught never to fill up the pot all the way to the top. You just want it to cover the top of the potato. For this recipe, I'm doing about a thousand grams of potato. That's one kilo or about 2.2 pounds. One tablespoon of kosher salt going in while they cook. They took about 38 minutes until fork tender, as you see here. Simply just pour them into a strainer. Get a little steam bath on your face. I always do that. It feels really good. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Don't judge me. And for the homemade mash, we're going really simple. Just hold milk and unsalted butter and all we're gonna do is heat that up over low to medium heat until it's all melted and hot. Now just simply pour your hot potatoes into a bowl, grab your dairy mixture and just pour it on top. Bear with me because this home cooked mash is really simple. I'm starting with just a regular old masher and then transitioning into a full blown whisk. I actually love using a whisk to make homemade mashed potatoes. I think it does a better job than using that little masher thing. Now let's give this a little taste. So there was salt in the water, but this is the point really where you wanna season it up again to taste. It needs salt, and you could use kosher salt, whatever kind of salt you want. I'm just doing a little bit of Malden salt here. Putting about a teaspoon in right now, and I'll just whisk that in. If you wanna put pepper in, obviously you can do that right now. I will be doing pepper in the other mashes, but since this one is so simple, we're gonna leave it like this. And make sure you'd never over whip it. It'll get really gummy. And there's your homemade mash done. It's super simple, but it's honestly really good. Next up, we're going with the restaurant style potatoes, which I chose Yukon Gold for. Same deal, peel them up. We'll then slice them into big chunks, just like we did with the russet potatoes. Put them in the water, change that out three times. Exact same process here, folks. Onto medium high heat with one tablespoon of kosher salt. The only thing we're doing different now is we're adding some garlic to this. I've been making this version of mash for a while. We're gonna start by chopping up some chives really fine. The other thing we're gonna add is this club. This is a freaking horseradish, and I couldn't get a smaller one. So I got this, it cost $10. Marcus, closer, put out your hand. And all I need to do with this monstrous thing is chop it in half, peel it down all the way around, and then finely shred it on a microplane. So Marcus has never smelled fresh horseradish. Marcus, get your nose in there and give it a big whiff. Big whiff. Big whiff. Yeah, yeah, go on. Ooh. Oh. 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 That's what we call a kitchen Ooh. hazing. Oh. Get it, oh, I just did it though. Yeah, we will. didn't film it though. Uh -oh. Ow, ow, Ugh, that sucks. <laughs> My Yukon gold potatoes were done after just 32 minutes, so a little bit faster than the russets, and we're gonna be using a ricer to get these things really fine and restaurant standard. This is definitely the cheapest tool you're gonna find to get a really great texture out of your mash. I'll put a link down in the description for this one. And we're gonna follow the same process with heating up the dairy. The only difference here is we're using a combination of milk, cream, and butter for these potatoes. Pour that hot dairy all over your potatoes, and since you riced it, all you need to do is use a spatula to work it together. Be careful 
careful again not to overwork it and when it looks really smooth and nice add in your horseradish and your chives at this point taste it for seasoning I added another two teaspoons of salt as well as some white pepper to finish this one off fold everything together nicely and there you have your perfect restaurant mash if you've only ever made mashed potatoes using a masher you're gonna see a huge difference in the texture when you use something like a ricer to work your potatoes okay let's taste these now I've made these a bunch of times before and I'll tell you why I love them so much the horseradish and chives have this incredible ability to make this heavy dish full of cream and milk and butter seem light. And that's what I love so much about adding those ingredients. It's really, really good. You gotta try it. Okay, here we go. Michelin star mash. Take a paring knife and draw a line cutting just into the flesh of your potato all the way around. Then simply just place these on a sheet pan and bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And these took almost an hour for me to get completely soft. They were really full of life. And you can see now why we cut that little line all the way around the potato. It just makes them really easy to pull out and then slice directly in half without damaging the skin in any way. Definitely let them cool down for a few minutes before you do this. I'm kind of insane. So the reason this makes sense is when you boil a potato in water, you're always gonna lose a little bit of flavor to the water. Even leaving the peels on, you'll lose a little bit of flavor. But when you roast a potato, you're actually concentrating the flavor. If you've ever had a baked potato and mix it with a little bit of butter and salt and you know just how good that is and how potato-y that tastes, that's why. Now what I like to do when I do this is just to smash them down like that. And I'll take a little scraper here and as I pull the skin up, I'll just scrape off just like so and that's how I get the meat out to start once you've removed all the flesh from the potatoes we are gonna start by passing it through a ricer but that is just to start pour your potatoes into a pot and we're gonna first warm them up with just a little bit of hot cream poured over I'll hit these with a nice little dose of Malden sea salt right away once all your cream has been worked in we are gonna start adding in little by little a copious ungodly amount of butter that's just room temperature unsalted butter and we're just working it in little by little into until we have the most buttery mash ever, but we are not done yet. We're gonna use a drum sieve to finish these off for the ultimate smooth Michelin star texture. It's insane, all right, here we go. We'll place that drum sieve over a bowl to catch all our buttery potato goodness. And we'll start with just a few good spoonfuls at a time and then work it through with one of these little pastry cutter ones. A plastic one is preferred. And while this does nothing for the flavor of your potatoes, it does absolutely everything for the texture. They are gonna be as smooth and as silky as human possible after going through this little device. After passing through the drum sieve, I will just scrape them back into the pot to warm them up if necessary. Oh my God. Wonder how much butter is in this one bite alone. Too much. God, that is so freaking good though. As long as you don't make it more than twice a year, I need another taste. It's rich in potato flavor. The texture is just insane. It's butter heaven. You gotta experience this at least once in your life. If only once, do it once. I'm having Marcus try it here because, I mean, must be done. It's gonna blow your mind, I think, Marcus. Mm, dude. Isn't that insane? It's so good. A cool way to serve mashed potatoes is a piping bag with a star tip, and we'll just pipe them into these ramekins. For me, this is just a nice way to serve your potatoes to your guests. It gives them a really fun visual element. And our Michelin star potatoes only needs one last thing. And yes, you got it right, that's more butter. Okay, my friends, a final taste in comparison. Homemade, really simple to make, easy to pull off, the cheapest, the fastest. <laughs> This one hits that nostalgia effect for me. These are like the potatoes I had when I was a kid. Just, they're delicious. There's nothing wrong with these. Restaurant style, horseradish and chives. Mm. They're just really, really, really freaking good. You gotta try that. Michelin star. Oh my God, how much butter am I eating? <laughs> Look at it. Oh. God, I don't know. I, how can I say those are better than those? How can I say it? As someone who cooked for 20 years, those are the best. I mean, come on, who am I trying to kid here? Those are the best, okay? They just are. You ready? Michelin star potatoes. Go ahead. What do you think? Just a little taste, because there's a lot of fat. Well, I hope you learned something today. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out. <laughs> 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 I love you and I'm out. <laughs>